Well, I'm so excited to be chatting today and interviewing beautiful Amanda Kate, who is a women's holistic empowerment coach. Amanda, how are you today? I am so good. I'm so happy to chat to you today. So thanks for having me. Yay! So I am excited to pick your brains. I know that you have just had such an epic journey since you first studied with us all the way back up in the Gold Coast, I think, when you were pregnant with your first child. Uh, How long ago was that that you studied NLP practitioner now? Um, Six years. Six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just over. Yeah. Yeah. So six years. And I feel like a lot has has shifted for you in that time so before you stepped into the world of NLP you just to let everyone know a bit about you you were personal training and really working one-on-one face-to-face with a lot of people I know that you had some visions to open up your own gym studio as well so maybe just for people who are just meeting you tell them who was Amanda before you studied with Evolve and Relaunch and and who are you today what are you offering today yeah, my gosh, it feels like a lifetime ago, multiple lifetimes ago, actually. Um, but yeah, so before I started with Evolve and Relaunch and did my first NLP practitioner course, uh, I was like head down, bum up in the fitness industry. Uh, I'd started my own business quite a few years before studying the NLP prac and was really engulfed in, really um, focused on women in particular. And so my business, Amanda Kate Body and Lifestyle, um, was predominantly focused on bringing women together in a safe place so they could work on their fitness, create a healthy, you know, body and lifestyle. And um, and it was really busy. Like I was super successful in that area because I was the only person, I suppose, in my in my sort of location that really specialized and did specialize in semi-private women's training. So um so yeah, I was I was doing great. I was it was gangbusters. My business was super successful, um, but I was reaching to the that point of hitting some brick walls with client results um, mm-hmm. from more of the yeah the mental mindset point of view. Yeah, and then I know that you you started making the transition after studying NLP and really mm-hmm. got some cr- incredible results, even just from NLP practitioner. And you did the NLP practitioner and were really helping integrate the mind body side of things and the mental emotional work what did you Mm. notice with your clients and then and and how long was it that you then took to transition into full-time mindset coaching and and stepping away from face to face yeah so this is an interesting journey because I studied NLP before I before when I was first pregnant and didn't actually fully utilize NLP within my business structure already until after I became a mum and I was probably yeah, and I was on mat leave. Um, my business was still working. I had coaches working for me and things like that. But yeah, so how that evolved was that when I was on mat leave with my daughter, um, my coach that was working for me at the time ended up getting a job on the mines and I was kind of forced to go back to work. Mm. And so I was projected back into PT life. And at that time I'd moved my business to working at home and so had classes running from my garage and it was a lot to juggle with a newborn baby. And so um, in that was so much growth and learning. Not only was I going through my own personal identity shift, becoming a mother, but that almost forced me to go, hold on a second, I can't work like this in my business and, you know, shift into this role as a mother at the same time as successfully as I wanted to. So I had to really look at my business and go, okay, cool. What do I really want to help women to do and what were the biggest challenges that were showing up for them. And so that's when I started to incorporate more, not so much in, I was still doing semi-private coaching and one-on-one coaching, but I started to open their eyes up to the inner world. And so I started running sister circles then. So my first sister circle, I think was in 2018. And I thought no one was going to show up. I was like, no one's going to come. No one cares about mental health and emotional stuff and their mindset. But I had like 20 people in my lounge room <laughs> yeah. and that's when I knew I was just like my own fear of people not really connecting to it was the thing that was stopping me from stepping into that space but then I knew like women actually really craved it mm-hmm. and that's where it just went on from there and so from there I just started to work more so in talking about their mental and emotional home just with the circles and that's where women felt safe enough or, or safer I should say to come to me one-on-one and so I started working with women one-on-one. And um, 
yeah, from there, it kind of just started to evolve. I started to get more passionate about bringing women into safe spaces, started running retreats. And so it gradually over time compounded itself to where PT was no longer a massive focus. It was almost like drip and drab, <laughs> you know. It happened quite organically is what it's Yeah, like. which I'm really lucky. I'm really fortunate to have had that sort of really beautiful transition over time. Yeah. 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 And then, so then how long was it after that you did like the hypnotherapy and the master practitioner? Yeah. Because like things have obviously evolved so much now for what you're doing. Yeah. So I actually did my hypnotherapy practitioner training with Paul when I was pregnant with my second daughter, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, which is hilarious. But, uh, and then after that, I was like, oh my God, hypnotherapy just really opened my brain to what the hell have I been doing just with NLP prac, sir? And then I was like, I have to do masters. <laughs> like hypno by itself is absolutely incredible. It's a game changer for really um, working with people and creating such deep change. But NLP um, masters was also just incredible. So I did hypno while I was pregnant, gave birth. And then by the end of that year, which was only six months, I did my master's and so I that happened remember quite you were like breastfeeding Mackenzie while you're in master practitioner yeah. online. That was really cool. Yeah. So um so you've got like the most the, the most evolved children because they've done all <laughs> the trainings with us. I think, <laughs> I think it's um it's so interesting as well, isn't it? Like once you do the master practitioner in hypno, you're like, how did I coach people with just practice? practitioner because yeah you know there's just so much more depth that that you have to it and so did you have any because I think for some people and we've had some people ask in our community as well like how do you make the transition I think for some personal trainers it sounds like yours was very organic but for some personal trainers there can be that fear of like not having that that physical presence with their clients and that not like it's a comfort zone of doing the the personal training Mm. but stepping into mindset what would you say are some of the most common kind of challenges that people maybe face in letting go of that PT and and even their clients letting go of that as well yeah can I just talk to one quick point before that is that so many PTs and I think I was in this phase before I actually knew that I needed to do something more for my clients was that um, there were these barriers that I was bumping up against with even just talking to my clients from a deeper aspect of like, well, why do you want to get fitter and healthier? Like those questions never really, as a personal trainer, you're not really taught to really connect with your client from like a deep understanding of what's motivating them and what's driving them. And this can really affect like your ability to not only be a successful personal trainer because it's going to prevent you from getting clients to start with. But I think that, um, I think the biggest challenge with moving from PT to completely mindset for me uh, was just this form of like my, my form of success in business was really tied to personal training. And so that was almost a form of my identity and also some attachments with success. And so the thing that kind of kept my toe, you know, attached to personal training was those attachments on the unconscious level. And so in my own growth and healing journey and transitioning, I had to really connect to, well, what do I see my future vision looking like? Like what, how do I really want to help women? What's really important to me? What are my values? And so Mm. I guess when I did masters, obviously you evolve and you get to know yourself on such a deeper level doing masters. That's when I knew and it landed really easily for me. And I was like, oh, wow. So now that I'm so deeply connected to myself, now I know how much more impact I can have with my clients. And so Talking from a PT point of view, if I was PT Amanda right now, the biggest challenge from moving from one to the other would be this idea that it has to be like a clean cut process. Yes. Whereas for me, I really integrated a lot of the NLP in how I was running my PT business, like asking the deeper questions when I was doing consults. And so your clients are getting to know you as this holistic, not holistic, but holistic coach who cares about what motivates them, who cares about what shit's going, sorry, what stuff's going on in their life that would prevent them from getting results or being consistent or being compliant to whatever program you're creating for them. And I think Um, it is such a safe, sacred space that gets created between a a PT and a client that mm. clients are kind of using, I always joke, hairdressers and personal trainers, they are the unpaid coaches of the world. (laughs) 
<laughs> may as well get qualified in NLP and hypnotherapy and all of this stuff because you're going to be doing it unpaid. And anyway, people are going to have that, just that it's this yeah. space where people are showing you themselves sometimes at their worst, you know, and, and so you're that person that they feel safe with. So I, I think that's so important what you talked about around, you know, having the skill set to be able to dive deeper into your clients' values and their intrinsic motivation for why they actually want to lose weight. And when you can be connected to that with your client, there's a deeper connection. There's also deeper underlying motivation then for them to do it. And you can talk to that as well to help them get the results they desire. And you can remind them why they're there and, and use all of those skills. So I agree. I think you've you've blended it all in really beautifully. And what I like about what, what I love about what you do now is that you haven't discarded the the body side of things. And in fact, I know you've got your thrive program, which is a six week course that's just started and people can reach out if they want to find out about the next intake four as well, which yeah. is really understanding those cornerstones of health and body. And, and I think, you know, Paul as well as a, as a trainer and he was personal trainer before he got into all of this, such a big advocate on, you know, you've got to have the physiology and the psychology. And yeah. I see see you really as blending that and and that's where you are that holistic point and so I think that's really cool so then what advice would you have to say a personal trainer maybe they've just studied NLP with us or they're just about to or something and they've got this deep desire of like I really want to start doing more mindset stuff but I'm still a little bit stuck in my branding and identity being that PT that typical PT what advice would you have to those personal trainers that are thinking about like this is something I'd love to do down the track yeah, I think the first thing I would I would encourage them to do is to ask them what what kind of what kind of impact do you want to make on the planet <laughs> as a broader aspect, but like for your clients, you know, what kind of impact do you want to have on their lives? Because what I know from my own experience in the PT world is that um, you can help them get fit and healthy, but you know how long are they going to be able to sustain and maintain that long-term, you know? And now that we understand the unconscious and now that we understand, you know, these self, self-sabotaging self cycles and the things that really bring us back into re- repeating old patterns, it's kind of like, well, for me, I didn't want to be a trainer. I didn't want to train people. I wanted to coach people. Yeah. And that was a big difference for me. It's like I, I had decided that I didn't want people to come and pay me to, to get them to work out and tell them what to do. I actually wanted to have a bigger impact on their life where I could teach them and coach them and, and empower them to go and apply those amazing skills and not need me and change things that are going to completely transform how they feel in their body, how they feel in their mind how they take care of themselves. And I think that was the biggest thing is like, ask yourself that question because that'll determine whether or not you go down that route or if you just stay as a PT and do what you're doing already, you know? Yeah. And I and I think it's so important like to honour where you do want to play. And for mm. some people like that, you know, I, I have a personal trainer and I freaking love it. I love having someone watch me while I squat and correct my form and technique and yeah. beat my eyes and, and stretch me and challenge me in that way. And so I think it's such a honorable role and if that's what you love do that but you know how cool is it to be able to do that and also have that awareness of being able to know you know what's going on for your client on a deeper level too and yeah. and if that's not your jam that's okay but maybe have someone that could maybe come into your studio that could create that space for your clients so that it is that holistic space because it's very common for people's fears, limiting beliefs, you know, self-sabotaging patterns to come in and, and and not even know that that's getting in the way of their results as well. So oh, I just love you. And I just think it's so cool that you've, you know, you're, you're doing what you're doing. And like we just talked about before we clicked record, had so much juicy gold, right? You just <laughs> talked about how what you're doing is just constantly evolving and You know, even so, I know you talked about, you know, partnering with kind of like-minded gyms and things like that. And there's just so many opportunities, I think, for the mindset piece in Mm. that personal training field. So I think, you know, if, if you're wanting to do that side of things and step away from the PT, just know that there's just as many people who just want to do the PT and they don't want to delve into the mindset stuff. And they're like, oh, thanks. You're here. You can feel that for my client base and help them in that way. So there'll be those reciprocal people. And I know you've found quite a few just in your area too, which Yeah. I think that's the greatest thing about, you know, when you've got experience in the fitness industry and, um, you know, before I became 
focused on the mind and all of the therapy work is that, you know, I did bring people into my own business. I bought nutritionists. I bought other mindset coaches into my business because, you know, I didn't have the skill set. And I don't want to be that jack of all, you know, because you're generally not going to be great at all those things. You're going to be average at many things, not a master of one. So I think that for me, that was really empowering and it was created such a beautiful community with my personal training community and that I was in the, allowing them the opportunity to expand if they wanted to. And it actually taught me so much by doing that. I was like, wow, there is a market. There is a, a gap in my business that I could definitely tap into if I wanted to. And so I think that if you are really skilled, your skill set and your mastery is training and programming and nutrition coaching and all those sorts of things. Awesome. Like own that part. And, but I think that you're missing a massive, massive gap in how you're supporting your clients if you're not giving them the opportunity to um, work on those deeper aspects because not only will it support you and help you to coach them better, um, but it will make them feel like they're getting this beautiful, um, all-rounded, you know, support network. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. I think that's beautiful. And that's, you know, community is so important and I know that, I think that that's a big piece if people are like, wow, they really care about me. And I think that people can sense that when you're bringing in people that can help them not to sell them things, but to help them understand things deeper about themselves and how to get those results. Because they're investing so much time and money in training. Like there's obviously deeper reasons for that as well. Yeah. Um, so what would, how would you then describe, because I know you've done a lot of our courses in person, online, that kind of thing. How yeah. would you describe our community and our courses to like, wellness professionals, personal trainers, people thinking about maybe studying with us, but they don't know about us. How would you describe our community and our courses? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is life changing. So whether or not you're doing it for your professional development and, you know, transformation or evolution or whatever it might be, you do it for yourself. (laughs) Like um, it's life changing even just for yourself, because let's face it, you know, I look back now at my 2016 self and, you know, I've I actually, there's so many things that come up on my memories. And I did a video after I came back from the Gold Coast and me just talking to the camera, I was so shy, I was so nervous. There was all those limitations in my unconscious. I'm so scared of like somebody not, you know, getting what I'm saying or being wrong or someone doesn't like my opinion. And so just from a personal growth point of view, like it's transformed my relationship. It's transformed the way that I parent. It's transformed the way that I show up in my family dynamic and extent, like, you know, extended relationships. And so just from a life growth point of view, like do it for that, if anything. Um, And the experience that you'll have if you're wanting to really expand your business is that you will get so deeply connected to your mission and your purpose with how you're supporting whoever you're supporting or whatever your business might be, you'll get so connected to your mission and your purpose that not only will that drive you to succeed on a far greater, you know, trajectory, but it will give you a skill set of being able to support those people in your business or your clients on a way, in a way that is just, you'll just never be able to do, <laughs> do that without these skill sets. I just... I can't see how I would be able to do what I do today without that skill set. Like this painting is a client made painted this for me um, because, you know, in her perspective, I've saved her life. And so in, in that kind of a point of view, it's kind of like, God, the impact that you could have just from having these skill sets is just invaluable. It's just so crazy important. So if you're thinking about it, oh my God, start, start with NLP. I think that the skills and the techniques that you learn there are just profoundly, it's so profound in all, and that you can apply to all aspects of your life. And the community of, you, you know, Evolve and Relaunch have such a beautiful community where it's so supportive, like every single practitioner that's in the community, you and Paul, it's just incredible the amount of support and the continual um guidance I guess that you guys supply us with is is so incredible like I've never experienced anything like that with any other training you know experience that I've had or um personal development which I think is incredible what you've created so yeah 
Thank you. That's like super powerful because it's always curious. I mean, we're having a lot of fun and we're <laughs> life changing. So it's good to yeah. know that other people have that experience too. But yeah, I, I feel like um, it's, it's like having this lens and this clarity on yourself and who you are and your life mm. that I agree. Like I could not imagine not knowing this stuff. Like I just, I don't want to say I wouldn't feel like I was living, but it's like you, you're living like a, a lesser potential of you. Yeah. And that's what I love actually is clearing you of all the crap. that's not you so that you can be the real you and just shine that light brighter. And that's really what I've seen of you. Although, uh, thank you so much for shining your light and sharing your journey and your story. Is there any other wisdom you would want to impart? Any other advice for maybe new coaches starting out? I would say never stop, never stop working on yourself. And working on yourself can also look like expanding your skill set for how you support others. Um, but I think for me, I became a master in the PT world and there was always going to be this ceiling that we like, let's just face it. We all have these self-imposed glass ceilings and they look like so many different, they come, they come in so many different sizes and shapes and, and emotions and belief systems and all sorts of things. But, you know, I became a master in that PT world, but this glass ceiling, you know, it felt really claustrophobic. And so I could have stayed in that box and I would have felt really comfortable, but if I hadn't lent into the fact that I was craving more and I could see through the glass ceiling, I could see more potential, but there was these feelings in my body of like fear or, you know, the fear of the unknown or, or I don't know if I've got what it takes or whatever it might have been, but feel into, you know, where your glass ceiling is and are you staying in a, are you staying stuck in a box? Because I think your body will always tell you. And for me, it was definitely like, I'm someone that has worked through a lot of her, their own fears and, you know, limitations with self-esteem and, and all those sorts of things. And I think that the more you connect and work on yourself and grow and evolve and, and learn about yourself, the more you're going to be able to push through those self-imposed glass ceilings and you just step even more into your authentic self. Because when we, when we have these limitations, they're, they're just a, a shadow aspect of ourselves. You know, it's us just living in this idea of who we think we are. And um, I think that when you push through those glass ceilings, you're not only going to become more you, but you're going to become the version of you that others are going to feel empowered and inspired by just watching that journey. And I think that whether you use those skill sets for your business or not, um, I think that anybody on the planet, <laughs> um, definitely the, the more curious you get about yourself, um, yeah, the more you become yourself, I think, you know. Absolutely. I love that. Never stop working on yourself. And mm -hmm. I would have to say you are a perfect embodiment of that and just, you know, your evolution is so inspiring and I can't wait to watch from the sidelines and see what evolves and what unfolds for you in the next few years as well. So thank, thank you. you so much for sharing your beautiful journey and your time. And I know that's just the tip of the iceberg. So anyone who wants to reach out to Amanda, we will pop her details below as well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.